back to High Low Lux, where luxury and style are attainable. We have a fun video today. We are doing how to look expensive, how to look elevated, how to elevate your outfit, all of those things. I've done videos like this before. I will link them all below. They're literally my best performing videos. I'm not sure why, but you guys seem to like it. Um, and I haven't done one in probably like a year and I have a few new kind of like tips and tricks that I wanted to share. So I know looking expensive is not the most important thing. And honestly, I don't really think that's what we're doing here. That's just what people say to me. Like, so that's kind of why I title it this. People always say like, wow, you make this look so expensive. But really I think it's just, it looks elevated. It looks put together. It looks nice. Um, so that's what these tips are for. No matter your budget, all of these things you can do to elevate your look. So without any more rambling, <laughs> we will get into the video and we'll get into the first tip. Tip number one is timeless jewelry pieces. Um, this is always, in any of these videos, this is always a tip, so I'm just gonna kinda like get it out of the way <laughs> with the first tip. Um, and of course, I'll share with you the jewelry I'm wearing, but this is a tip because one, it just depends on what your style is and what you prefer. Um, so again, some people are like ring people, some people love like stacks of bracelets, some people love necklaces. I'm a necklace person. Um, I don't do a ton of bracelets because that, it just annoys me. Like I don't like a lot of things clanking. And I also don't do a ton of rings like sometimes, but really when I want to elevate an outfit, I layer on the jewelry. Um, today I'm gonna be showing you jewelry from Monica Venator. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, um, but this video is in partnership with them and this is my first time trying the brand and I've actually tried something new with their silver jewelry. I do like some close-ups. Everything is 100% recycled sterling silver or 18 karat um, gold vermeil. So I have this gold piece which is super delicate and then I just have like this kind of like Chain. I also don't mind mixing metals. I don't do it all the time, but I did want to show you here because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, so yeah, so I have like silver and I have gold paired together and you can layer it on even more. It just depends on your outfit. And I think that's a great way um, to elevate your look is based on what your outfit needs, of course, right? So for me, I have this like really sharp neckline. I have a lot of detail with my sleeves. So I stuck with like very delicate pieces, but I still wanted something that looked very high-end, very expensive, very um, elegant. So these are the pieces that I went with. I also wanted to show you, this is something similar to like the one I have on, but it's just like a longer version and you can make it like a choker style. Um, it's kind of like a lariat or you can make it longer. Again, I'll do close-ups. Um, but adding time, and I say timeless because think of these as pieces that can kind of be interchanged with any outfit. Um, things you can like sleep in and you don't have to take off. You don't have to like switch in and out based on what you're wearing. You can always add more, but these are kind of like great base pieces that can always just, you know, up the ante um, of your outfit. So again, I say timeless because I just think of, it doesn't have to be specifically gold, it can be silver, um, but just pieces that are good for stacking, layering, um, and can be interchangeable with any look, no matter your style. Like I could wear this, even if my like look was a little edgier, I could wear this and maybe layer on other pieces. If I was doing something a little more, I don't know, preppy or a little more sexy, I could still wear any of these and maybe just add or subtract. And it just depends on what you um, prefer. Again, if you're not like a huge necklace person, maybe you don't wear necklaces, but you love a good arm stack. That can also elevate a look. You layer on, you know, like some timeless classic chain pieces and then you can do like something more timeless and then add something more bulky then add a watch something chunky it can just elevate the look and make it look more interesting than just something like super simple and then again some people are ring people so same works the same way um if you did like a chunky ring and then you know maybe a very delicate ring um and did maybe like two and then two and i feel like it's one of the easiest ways you can find jewelry at all price points um but i wanted to share the monica venator jewelry i do have a discount code so if you're interested in the pieces i'm wearing um i will link of course they'll be linked below but you can save 20 percent off with my code right here right here um so if you're interested in trying any of these pieces and my code is valid for three months so um, i'll just keep it in the description box of like the next few videos over the next three months um but also let me show you um the packaging it's super super cute so everything comes in little boxes like this 
and then you just pull it out and then they have like their own little dust bag which i love because that's great for traveling when you want to travel with your jewelry and you don't want it to like get all messed up you can keep it in here like i always keep these things all right moving on to tip number two to look expensive to look elevated is balanced makeup so i don't think i've shared this before and of course with all of this these are just my opinions and this is you know do what works for you take it on if you like it um but i kind of think of balanced makeup just like a balanced outfit um i don't know if you guys have ever heard this like if you have cleavage out then wear something long or if you have something tight up top or something loose on the bottom that's kind of how i think of my makeup if i'm doing a bold eye then i keep it neutral with the lip basically like today um so obviously that just depends on your thing um i'll pop up some examples as well but i think this is a great way to just make your look a little more streamlined so that you can focus on the bold piece like that's kind of the point right you want like a really pretty you know red lip let's make that the focus so it can really stand out and really get the attention it deserves instead of competing with you know a dramatic eye as well or like super bold blush and then we don't know where to look or like what's the focus so that is a tip um someone who does this so well with lips is tracy ellis ross i love i think a lot of times she like barely wears any makeup but then she'll do like just a little bit of mascara and then like a super pretty like fuchsia like fuchsia pink lip and it just looks so stunning it looks so refined so elegant but also just so fun um and stylish and she can just pair i mean obviously she can wear with anything like sometimes she just like puts on a bold lip with like a swimsuit um but she it makes her look really put together without trying that hard but it's because you can focus on like that statement makeup piece or makeup look um so again if you want to do like a smoky eye or a dramatic lash then do like more of a nude lip that's what i have here like i wanted to do something fun today i'm wearing white it's very neutral and you know it's summer it's fun so i put on more of like a kind of like pinky yeah pinky kind of eyeshadow look i always wear lashes because i don't have lashes so that's what it is but they are more of a like natural ish lash um but then i did a nude lip because i do want you to pay attention to the hard work i put into this eyeshadow and that's the focus of the look so balanced makeup is just my little tip now again if you are like just a super creative person or that's just where you like utilize your creativity or just what makes you happy and you want to go all out go all out these are just my tips <laughs> tip number three is going to be adding chic accessories to your wardrobe um, and what i mean is like really thinking about collecting accessories that can make your outfits pop and can really make the difference instead of just buying things because you think they're cute or they're trendy or they're you know in fashion or you just like it really think about those accessory pieces that are gonna give you the most bang for your buck a great example uh, pop up pictures is um my Loewe obi belt now that is an extremely expensive belt um and i'll link some dupes below because uh, they have like dupes on shein and a lot of different websites so i'll link some dupes below but that is an accessory that makes an impact and i'm so like i thought i thought about that belt for probably two years and i just thought like the price is outrageous like it's just crazy like no way i'm not gonna get you know it's not gonna be that much of a big deal like it's not gonna make that much of a difference and it does it there's so many things that i didn't wear that much that now i do wear more because i have that belt and it just elevates the look so much it makes me like these simple pieces or you know it just brings so much to an outfit and i am an accessories person a lot of my clothes besides this one but a lot of my clothes are kind of like streamlined they're simple some are classic um but i have a lot of like basics and essentials and i take my time and really try to find special accessory pieces that can really bring it up a notch so think about just i would i would say go through your accessories if you don't love it or you don't feel like excited when you reach for it get rid of it think about sunglasses like i'm a huge sunglass collector because again they just make a difference when i want to just throw on you know some shorts and a shirt you know a button-up shirt but then i like put on some really cool sunglasses layer on a couple necklaces and it's like wow now we gotta look um hats are a great thing to think about i have two favorite hats from lack of colors um i'll pop up pictures i recently just wore the blue one outfit makers <laughs> like statement makers and again you can get i mean these hats are around like a hundred dollars but you can get dupes they have these hats on amazon you can get them i know lulu's has great hats you can get these for like 15 20 bucks and they make a huge impact in your look and just elevate it so much more um what else let's see belts 
hats, sunglasses. Those are probably my main things. Of course, jewelry would be um, in there as well, but we already talked about that. But just really think about the accessories that you have. I would kind of purge anything. Sorry, someone's at the door. I got a package. Okay, they left it. <laughs> um, but this is something I did a few years ago. Like I went through like um, all of my belts and just any accessories and threw out anything that I didn't absolutely love that did not bring me joy <laughs> um, and that I didn't think made a huge impact in my look. And then just start when you're out, just start really looking at those pieces. When you're shopping, think about like, wow, what would really make the difference? What would make the statement? So I could go on and on. I love accessories, but <laughs> that's a huge tip. That probably should have been number one. Uh, next tip, focus on the fit. Um, I say this because I feel like as women, and maybe, you know, maybe it was just me, but we put a lot of weight on the size on the tag. You know, and sometimes we just really want to stick to that. No, I'm a, I'm a six. So I'm, you know, if it's not, if I can't fit a six, I'm not going to get the thing. Um, if it's not a six, then, you know, I'll squeeze into the six, even though I really need an eight. Here's the thing. All these sizes, <laughs> They're different from store to store like so don't let that keep you from one looking and feeling your best but two truly enjoying something when you just need to size up or size down i have sizes two to like 12 in my closet and it doesn't matter to me now of course if i'm not feeling great about the size i'm at then that's a different story but if there's something that is tight and i want it and i know like this is you know i love this piece size up it doesn't matter fit makes so much more of a difference and squeezing into a really pretty dress or just sizing up and it fitting and you know falling nicely makes a huge difference and it can kill the look right there's so many times i'm sure you've seen it where something just looks so tight and uncomfortable on someone that you can't even appreciate the silhouette or you know the design detail or any of that because it just is now it's not even just unflattering but it just looks uncomfortable also, I always talk about tailoring in these videos, so I just lump it into this because it's a big part of it. Um, things that, people that have a ton of money usually get clothes custom made. Um, and it's, and that's why they always look so nice. But it's not that difficult to get something from Zara or Misguided and size up, right? Get it so that it fits whatever the biggest part of you is. For me, it's my hips. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I could fit this, but it's a little tight in the hips. Size up and then get the waist taken in. You know, size up and get like the shoulders, you know, taken in or, you know, get the straps tightened or do whatever you need to do. Because if you look into it, I'm sure it costs a lot less than you think. Um, I've had tailors that, you know, can hem things for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, um, take up a skirt, take up a pant leg, um, change a strap, do something that will make the fit perfection and make it look like it's custom made for me. So focus on the fit is my next tip. Focus on the fit. Okay, the next tip on how to look expensive is manicured hands. I'm sure you guessed this. Um, these are usually in these kind of videos too, but I feel like it's so valid. And again, this does not have to be a $50, $100 manicure. I still do my own nails myself. I started in the middle of quarantine and I just it's kind of like my thing now and I just do it. I do them every couple of days. Um, I use like SE quick dry polish, takes me like 10 minutes, um, but it makes a difference. There's nothing worse than being out and about, feeling your best, looking good. You have on the fit and the jewelry and the accessories and everything is great. And then you have chipped nails or broken nail <laughs> or half a nail. Like that, because it's the details, right? And those are the things that separate, um, you know, a fine outfit from like a look is like those small details. And that's one of them. You know, when you go to like pay or, you know, give your card and you just have like really fresh manicure. Those are the things that like really elevate an outfit and, and kind of like give that like refinement and that elegance to a look. So I wouldn't say like, some people may hate this bright green. I'm really into it right now. Um, and I wouldn't, I don't wanna put anyone in a box and say like, oh, it should be nudes. Oh, it should be pinks. It should be, you know, it should be what works with your lifestyle and your um, outfit choices and your personality and just what makes you happy because that's kind of the point of all this like creative fun stuff. Um, but it should be <laughs> well manicured. And that doesn't mean it has to be short like my nails. This is just 
how I function. Like I need to be able to like use my fingers or I'll go crazy. Um, but even if they're long, that's up to you and your preference, but still, right, if they're all long and one is missing, let's get that taken care of because that's gonna make a huge difference in the look. Okay, next tip. I've never shared this before, um, but it's something I've recently been more aware of, probably because of my job as a blogger, a YouTuber. I see myself, I look at myself a lot, I edit videos, I edit pictures. That is posture and just learning your body. Um, that, and they kind of go hand in hand with my next one, which is confidence. Um, these, like your posture can make or break an outfit as well. I would challenge you as you walk around your house, like when you walk past the mirror, look at yourself, but really look at like how you're standing. Like are your shoulders hunched over? Um, you know, do you walk with your head down a lot? Um, when you enter rooms, do you usually face the room you're entering or do you kind of like back into the room? These are all things that play into confidence and just how you are um, perceived. But confidence is key to any outfit, right? Like feeling good, but really like, you know, standing tall, shoulders back, um, letting the clothes fall nicely. And posture is a huge part of that. And I feel like we don't sometimes think about that. Um, I think about it often because I'll see myself and I'll, you know, in a picture when I'm editing or a video, you know, I'm editing and I'll be like, why was I like so slouched right there? Why was I like, I'm very visual. So maybe like spend some time, take a couple pictures or have someone take pictures of you. Or again, just when you walk past mirrors, just notice that and try to be more aware uh, cause it can make a huge difference and that's free. So, <laughs> okay. Next tip to look expensive or elevate your outfit is probably my favorite staples over trend pieces. Say it with me, staples over trend pieces. This will make putting together outfits, packing for vacations, mixing and matching pieces so much more easier. Um, so easy, something like that. Um, I'm not saying not to buy trend pieces. The majority of your wardrobe should be staple items, classic timeless pieces that will never go out of style that you can mix and match. Um, I barely take anything. Someone asked in my Chicago vlog, like how did I pack for that trip? Because I shopped a lot and I brought a lot of stuff back. My suitcase was like, my suitcase weighed like 30 pounds when I went because I literally took like two linen shirts, um, a pair of sh black shorts, um, a denim skirt, like literally everything. And I just reworked those things throughout the trip. And that's how my closet is. Like it's so easy for me to get dressed because almost everything goes together. I have a few standout pieces that are like special or, you know, are for special occasions or just like statement pieces. Like this dress to me is a statement piece, but still I could wear it with boots, I could wear it with sandals, I could wear it with flats, I could wear it a lot of different ways. And that's just how I shop for things. And I've just found that to be, I used to do a lot of like closet clean out, purge kind of videos. And I would get rid of so much stuff. And over the years of analyzing that stuff, it was always the trend pieces. It was always something that like, oh, I wore the outfit. I wore it a couple times, but it really didn't go with anything else. And I was kind of over it. And the things that I would always have in my closet are like my H&M um, my H &M linen shirts, or you know, my favorite Zara denim, my favorite Zara um, suit, uh, things like that. So really, again, this is a good one to just like go in your closet. Think about the things you wear the most and how can you expand that? because that's how you're gonna get the most out of your wardrobe and make it easier for you to put out this together without it being repetitive, right? Like if you wear, you know, your favorite pair of linen pants, can you get them in another color? Can you get them in another um, silhouette? But it still feels the same and you know you can reach for them the same and it's just as easy to put together. You know, I have a pair of H&M linen pants and I have them in a long version and a cropped version in the same color. Because if I wanna wear with heels, it's still just as easy to put that look together as it is when I wanna wear with flats. So staples over trend pieces, but I think it's a great way to look expensive because then you can put together any look add on your fun accessories, your bold statement pieces, and you have an outfit, but still on a day to day, you have easy pieces that you can mix and match and get your cost per wear. I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> um, and I just feel like those are the kind of the building blocks of building a great wardrobe. Queens, those were all of my tips on how to look expensive. I hope that you take this video as helpful, informative, fun, 
Of course, make sure you check out Monica Venator. Um, I'll leave the link to these pieces below. Also, don't forget to use my discount code here. You can get 20% off your order for the next three months and I'll just link it in every um, video going forward. Let me know any of your tips below. Like, let's make this like a helpful uh, comment section. If you have any tips that you like, something you always do when you just wanna like up the ante of an outfit, of a look, if you really wanna take it there. What is something you add, subtract, um, implement to make you feel like a million bucks? What is that thing? I'm dying to know. Let me know below. I also like my older videos. Um, I think I do one like every year. So I'll link all of those too. Um, so you can check it out. Cause I'm pretty sure I mentioned different things in all of those videos. I think that's everything. Okay, I think that's everything. Thanks for stopping by. See ya.